Hi friends, it's Elise here from Bully Bell, and I'm sorry this video is coming out a little bit late, but I'm back from vacation and I'm excited to plan, and I'm actually gonna be using this kit for August. And then the Planner Society kit that comes out this month, I plan to use to set up my Kate Spade Wellesley that I'd like to use as my wallet. So let's look at what came in the kit this month. We got six different double-sided papers. We got one piece of acetate, two pieces of vellum. We got some post-its, some floral paper clips, some beautiful foil journaling cards, some stencils. Then we also got our tabs and tab labels, some cute little sticker sheets, also a stamp set. They also included the usual die cuts along with a cute little floral washi roll, a ballpoint pen, and this really cute little pen case. So now that we see what we're working with, let's see what I can make. So this month I'm finally gonna be able to use this adorable yellow polka dot Webster's Pages planner that I bought several months ago, right when it first came out at Joann's. And I've just been waiting for the perfect kit to use to bring out this beautiful yellow color. Now, unfortunately, because this kit included some light yellows and some mustard yellows and then another kind of chartreuse color, I felt like in order to make this planner work, I had to unfortunately downplay that beautiful chartreuse. I also thought that the color palette in this kit was kind of interesting because it includes a kind of aqua blue, but then also kind of like a spearmint green color, which you don't see together that much. But that's kind of what makes these planner kits fun because since somebody else curates them for you, it kind of forces you to work outside of your natural box and explore some color options that you might not normally choose. So in the meantime, as I've been babbling on here, I just went ahead and picked out my four dividers and then put on my divider tabs. So for the first tab, I'm going to be doing a monthly section. The second tab is going to be a weekly section. In the third tab, I'm going to do a little girl boss section for my Etsy shop. And then in the final tab, I'm going to do a list section. So with that out of the way, now it's time to move on to my favorite part, which is decorating my dividers. So the first divider, I decided to use this beautiful floral print. And because I was going to be using one of the little journaling cards, probably in the front pocket, I decided that I would not use one on the first divider here and branch out and try something different. So as usual here, I'm just sorting through some different scrapbook papers that I have um, and just kind of picking out which ones I feel like might work here. That way I kind of have a little pile of different scraps and journaling cards to work from. And I always recommend that you save little scraps of scrapbooking paper because they are often the perfect size to use on little dividers like this. So when I saw that kind of periwinkle paint streak stripe paper, I knew that would be the perfect shade to use with this kit. And then I also saw this adorable little gold foiled journaling card that I thought would work with the yellow colors beautifully as well. I also wanted to incorporate some kind of quote or sentiment, but I knew that a journaling card would be too big. So instead I decided just to use one of these little stickers from a Mambi quote sticker book. So after picking out those items, I just decided to layer the periwinkle stripe on the bottom and then put the portion of that rounded edge journaling card on top and then top it off with the sticker. After looking at it for a moment, I decided that I wanted to separate the sticker a little bit more from the background. So I just took this little piece of gold foiled washi from a Michaels tube and just layered that underneath the sticker before adding some die cuts on top. As I look at it now, I see that I pretty much covered up all of the kind of reddish color that it's on this paper. So I kind of wish that I had chosen a die cut that had a little bit more of that red color. That way some of the decoration in my planner pocket maybe would make more sense. Now onto the second divider, I decided to go to my trusty book of little mini dashboards from the Target dollar spot. I'm kind of running low on these now. I've used almost all of them, but I felt like this particular one worked because it had that kind of pink color and the red color and the mustard yellow and the spearmint green. So I went ahead with that and then decided to try and pull out this darker blue color that is in the divider itself. 
At first I was playing with the idea of maybe doing a kind of diagonal matting with the dark blue and then a light yellow and then I decided that I really did like the background paper so I didn't want to cover it too much or make it too busy so I decided maybe I would pull in this kind of spearmint green color um, just to make it a little bit more simple instead of doing the diagonal matting. But then I started thinking that maybe the journaling card was the problem, which I still kind of think that maybe it was. Like, I did end up using that little dashboard journaling card, but in looking at it, it is definitely my least favorite divider. And even though the colors were there, there's just something that's not right about it. But hey, no use crying over subpar dividers, right? But in my playing around, I did like the way that that red color looked, so I decided that I would basically kind of go back to plan A, which is the original journaling card dashboard little thing, and then incorporate more of a red color along with the dark blue. So in order to make it a little bit more interesting, I thought that I would play a little bit with the edges of the paper by rounding the blue part to make it mirror the um, little reddish journaling card, but then keep the corners of the actual um, quote journaling card still at 90 degree angles. Then when I had it kind of all assembled, I still felt like it needed a little bit something more. So I started playing around a little bit with some other colors that I could bring in with the matting. And when I saw that beautiful light yellow lattice print, I knew that that was exactly what I wanted to bring in. And just to keep it a little bit interesting, I thought that I would just keep the yellow paper with the 90 degree angles along with the little journaling card itself. So then I just put it all together and it's not straight, but that doesn't bother me so much. Oh, and I wanted to use that paper clip, but then I realized that it's upside down. If it had been oriented the correct way, I thought it would have been cute to kind of cut on the inside to make it like actually kind of like a paper clip and then layer it kind of over the journaling card itself, but oh well. Now for the third divider, I decided that I would use some of these beautiful die cuts. I really love it when they include the little planner um, die cuts. I think they're so pretty, so I definitely wanted to use that. I decided that I would take a little bit of inspiration from the divider tab that I used with this divider, which has that aqua blue and the periwinkle. So I decided to use this periwinkle stripe paper again. I struggled a little bit with the placement of my design because I didn't have that much room between the location of the tab itself and also the holes at the top part of the divider. So I was struggling a little bit with how to place it and to work around the holes as well. I went ahead and cut a piece of the periwinkle stripe and then kind of placed my die cuts where I thought they might go. And then I decided to use a little bit of this kind of turquoise washi that played well with the spearmint color in the leaves of the lemons. I then just took a little Planner Society Girl sticker from one of the sticker sheets and just used a little piece of polka dot paper to set it apart a little bit so that it wasn't so stark against the turquoise washi. I still felt like the design needed something else, so I looked down at my journaling card pile and right on top was this beautiful typography kind of journaling card and I felt like that would be the perfect matting for my design. So I put that down and then layered the rest on top. In order to avoid inadvertently amputating any of my die cuts, I decided that I should go ahead and punch through the periwinkle stripe paper so that I would be able to better place the die cuts. And with the holes in place, I was better able to navigate my workspace here so that I could work around those holes and also work around the divider tab that was kind of encroaching on the bottom edge of my design. That is definitely the challenge of working with little personal dividers because they are so small it is a little bit hard to work around in that small little space. Now for the final divider we have this beautiful periwinkle gingham that is on top of a wood grain print. And since these beautiful foil journaling cards have the same kind of wood grain print in the background I figured this would be the perfect place to use one. At first I considered using one of the bags that came with the kit as matting, but then I decided to use this beautiful yellow lattice print as my matting, and then use that cute little picnic basket die cut at the bottom. 
So I cut a piece slightly larger than the die cut and then put that down, but then I decided that I still wanted a little bit something more up at the top for some visual interest. So I went ahead and cut two strips of paper, one in a kind of reddish herringbone and the other in a kind of spearmint green color and decided to make some faux bunting at the top. I layered one color on top of the other, but then thought that might look a little bit too busy. So then I decided to alternate between the two colors and just do one strand of bunting, but I actually thought that looked even busier. So I went back to just one color of bunting and laid it out where I thought it should go and then went ahead and glued down the piece of matting before gluing down the little bunting pieces themselves. I also thought it would be fun to incorporate this darling little pink polka dot washi that came from a Michaels tube. And I even played with putting this um, turquoise heart washi on top, but I felt like that looked a little bit too busy, so I went back to my original idea of just the pink polka dot. With that down, I went ahead and glued down the spearmint bunting pieces, and then in looking at it, decided that, you know what, I may as well put the other bunting pieces on top too. In case anybody is interested, I am using just an adhesive roller that comes in like a four pack at Walmart and I'm just doing that off screen just to spare you the boredom of watching that. With that all done, I just went ahead and layered the journaling card on top before putting it back into the planner. Now, before I move on to the pockets, I always like to look at my dividers one last time to see if there's anything that I'd like to change. And on this divider, I decided that I would add that little washi die cut because it was so cute. Then it was time to move on to my second favorite part, which is decorating the planner pockets. I like to put down a piece of paper there behind the pocket just to kind of bring in some of their colors and protect the planner from the rings. Then I like to just kind of start putting things randomly around so in my clips so that I see what colors I'm working with so that I can see what colors I'd like to incorporate as well. Sometimes it's fun to use some of the little cardstock backing packaging pieces that come in the Planner Society kit in your pockets just to pull in some other colors. So I kind of played around a little bit with that. And then I decided to move on to picking a journaling card for the window. The journaling card was almost the perfect size for the window, but I realized when I put it in there that it would probably slip and slide around a lot. So I realized that I would need to use another piece of paper as a backing for it so that it would stay in place. In looking at the different clips and accessories I had gathered for the pockets, I realized that I had a lot of pink and red and spearmint, but not that much periwinkle. So I thought that it would be a good idea to use this periwinkle stripe paper as my background paper instead. Then it was just a matter of moving things around until I got them in an arrangement that worked for me and wasn't too cluttered. Although I have to say it is a little bit cluttered, but you know, it works well enough. I really do try and use as many of the Planner Society clips as possible because this really is the best place to use them. So after I had them in an arrangement that I liked, I went ahead and put in my inserts. I will continue using these sticky beans inserts for my weekly and monthly and then I found some Filofax inserts at the Goodwill. Like there was this folder of random stuff and I was like, my head was telling me, look at the folder, look in the folder and I did and it was all these Filofax accessories. So that was a good find for like a dollar. And I'm so glad that my planner senses were working because I normally would not have opened that random folder at all. All right, well, I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for your patience in my absence here for several weeks since I've been on vacation, but now I'm back in the swing of things. And I have lots of new videos to post, including my Coco Daisy setup and giveaway, which should be up in a couple days. So thanks again, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.